Three, two, one, zero. Lift off. How could a simple number like zero change our world? Let me show you because this is actually a story which is blowing my mind. Without the number zero, our world would look drastically different. We wouldn't have social media, no computers and no electricity. Zero is more important than any number you can think of. But for thousands of years, humans didn't even know that the number zero exists. It is the center of our modern world and how we interact with it today. Science, machines, weapons, trains, cars, planes and cities. None of those things could be built without the number zero. The story of how we discovered zero is a story of people asking questions and trying to understand the world around them. The discovery of the number zero is considered as one of the biggest achievements of human history. But I had no idea. This number didn't only improve math and our understanding of the world. No, a whole war broke out against this number. The number zero was so feared that its usage was banned for thousands of years. So I wanted to understand all of this. How does a number even get invented? How do we get from writing a number like this to this? But most importantly, why is this number zero so dangerous? Get ready to dive into the world of the number zero and learn about staggering 30,000 years of history. We are looking into different civilizations and covering how they discovered, used or even fought battles over the concept of zero. Our journey kicks off 30,000 years ago. Let's take a journey back to the Stone Age. Reality looked way different back then. With this kind of life, there was simply no need for the number zero. There were other things you had to worry about, like not dying. I know this sounds very weird for us today, but think about it. The concept of zero is something which doesn't exist in the real world. You can't go to the store and buy zero apples or meet zero people. It just simply doesn't exist in the physical world. And this is the reason why the concept of the number zero didn't exist in ancient civilizations. The only concept of units were what you could physically see in front of you. This is the beginning of how numbers emerged and this then led to us discovering zero. Because people had the natural desire to count their things. They asked themselves, how much land do I own? How much apples do I own? Or how many kids do I have? <laughs> So what they did, they started craving lines into stones and bones. And this was the first way for human beings to count things. So this is seen as the start of the development of numbers. But there is a huge problem with this. I mean, how in the world would we write down the number 3666? This takes a huge bone. That's what she said. <laughs> so we haven't been able to think in larger numbers yet. So this brings us to the development of more complex counting systems. Every kid today can count one, two, three, until 10. And it's super easy, right? To count like this is only possible because we already understand the zero and how it works. So back then, the Babylonians needed to create their own number system. And this is what we're gonna look into now. The first number system of humanity. So if we look into this counting system, we see that it looks completely different and quite complicated. This is because it didn't have a zero. So what did they do? They had two different symbols, one which is shaped like an arrow and the other one which is shaped like a wedge. And those represented the number one and 10. And you needed to combine those numbers to get the number you wanted. A2 was just two one symbols together. 20 was just two 10 symbols together. And 12 was one 10 symbol and two one symbols. They used a sexagesimal system, which means rather than using base 10 like we do today, they used base 60. Once they got to 59, they used the same symbol as one to represent the 60. They used positional notation as well, which means that the position of each symbol has its own specific meaning. We do this today as well. When writing 111, we know exactly what each of those numbers mean. We have a one in the ones column, a one in the tenths column, and a one in the hundreds column. Now, if you add them together, you get 111. Rather than multiple of tens, Babylonians used multiples of 60. So this number would be 3661, 3600 
plus 60 plus 1. 3661. But now we run into a pretty big problem because imagine we have the number 3601, a 1 in the 3600 column, nothing in the 60s column and a 1 in the 1 column. This is fine if we have columns to guide us, but the Babylonians wrote their numbers freehand on clay tablets. This made it super difficult to tell numbers apart. Is this 3601, 3660 or 61? Imagine writing 101, 110 and 11 like this. We don't know for sure what kind of number this is by writing it down like this. So back then in the Babylonian times, people had a rough estimation of what number it could be. You go into a shop and wanted those amount of apples. People knew that it's not going to be 110 or 101. It's probably going to be the 11 that you need. But this is still a problem if in a number system if you can't identify clearly which number it is. So with time, they also understood that this is not very efficient. So they introduced something as a placeholder. And based on where you put this in the number, it was very easy to understand what number it was. So we as human beings have been so close to understand what the number zero was. But then everything fell apart. To understand this, we need to move to Greece because they had their own number system, which looked like this. And then at some point, they heard about the number zero. And this is where we almost lost the idea behind the number zero. This was a huge problem. For many civilizations, numbers were only a tool to count things. But if we look into the history, for the ancient Greeks, numbers were way more important than that. The Greeks believed that the universe was based on the ideas of Pythagoras and Aristoteles. They believed that every single thing, whether it was a physical object or not, could be expressed in numbers or geometry. They saw the world as consisting of shapes and patterns. To divide their land fairly among the citizens, they used geometric systems. And also things like music, they analyzed by numerical ratios. So this idea of a perfect and orderly universe, which could be expressed in numbers, was very, very important for the Greeks. But now with the introduction of zero, something came into the reality, which would destroy their whole worldview. So what shape could represent nothingness? You don't find it in nature as we've already talked about. So this is where Aristoteles just said, it's merely a product of man's imagination. It doesn't exist. You have to understand that dividing by zero was a nightmare for the Greeks because it completely messed with all of their logic and all of the math rules that they had and therefore with the perfectly ordered worldview. It's a little bit like dividing a cake into zero pieces. This doesn't work and the Greeks didn't like this at all. So let's move forward 200 years and look at ancient Rome. Because they had their own numeral system, it looked like this. Although I know how this works and you probably have used it as well. I didn't know that this was merely used for trade. They weren't as interested in math equations like other civilizations. So they almost exclusively used it for trade. And here we have the same problem. You don't need the number zero, right? Because you can't trade zero things. So here we are now in the stage where the humanity almost forgot about the idea of zero. And this is because some ancient civilizations didn't embrace it or it just didn't fit into the worldview. While the Western world was very hesitant towards the idea of number zero, there was another ancient civilization which was very, very much open for it. So now let's move to India. So there was an Indian mathematician and his name is, I'm sorry, but I think it is Brahmagupta. And this guy developed the first rules for the number zero. Because if you think about it, zero is a very, very interesting number. If you add zero to any number, nothing happens. But if you multiply it with zero, you always get zero back. And if you dare to divide through zero, then everything breaks. 
But why were the Indians the first people to understand this? The reason why Indians were able to understand the number zero lies very, very deep in their culture. They didn't see numbers tied to the physical world as the Greeks did. Instead, they saw numbers as tools to play around and test out ideas which couldn't be touched or seen. For example, two minus four. This might not make sense with real apples, but if you think about this as a math problem, you see that the logical solution is minus two. This approach gave them way more freedom to explore abstract concepts and come up with new ways of understanding numbers. Also, it fit into the worldview. As some Buddhist text states, the truly absolute and the truly free must be nothingness. They already had in their culture an understanding of this nothingness. And when they figured out zero, it changed everything. So let's look into why this number zero is so groundbreaking. There are three main functions which the number zero has. Firstly, when you include zero into a number, it changes the value of the other digits in the number depending on where they are relative to that number zero. A one and four can become a 0.14, they can become a 104 or 140. Everything depends on the position of the zero. So it acts as a placeholder and it gives us the opportunity to calculate with less effort. Secondly, zero is the midpoint between positive and negative numbers. Before the number zero, negative numbers haven't been in existence. There was no concept of nothingness yet. So how in the world should they already think about less than nothing negative numbers? But they had a huge impact because by going below zero and understanding negative numbers, many new, unusual, but useful math formulas were discovered, like imaginary numbers, complex numbers, fractals, and advanced astrophysical numbers. Lastly, zero is a facilitator for ratios and fractions. With zero, we can easily form fractions into decimal form, which means from one half to 0 0.5, which then obsoletes complicated conversions when dealing with fractions. So it's very, very useful. Through trade networks, eastwards to China and westwards to the Arabic and Islamic world, the number zero slowly emerged back into Europe again. Now that other cultures discovered and understood the importance of number zero, you might think that the people in Europe did so as well. The opposite happened. They started to fight the number zero. Powerful institutions like the church saw the number zero as a threat to their position within the society. I know it sounds weird that the church is afraid of number zero, but let's look into this. It all comes down to the belief that God was the source of everything in the universe, and the center of it was the earth. Back then, they believed that the universe was finite and contained a finite number of celestial spheres. And the use of zero now implied that there could actually be an infinite number of them. This challenged the church authority and position within society. And they've been quite aware about this. So this is why they rejected the idea of the number zero completely. I know it sounds weird that the church might be afraid of a number, but this is what happened back then. But it eventually got so bad that in 1299, they completely banned the usage of the Hindu Arabic numeral system. And with this, the use of the number zero. Although it was banned, some badass merchants just didn't give it. They just used it because they knew how much more efficient the number zero was than the numeral system, which the church still required them to use. I mean, look at the difference. Just by looking at it, you see that the number zero is so much more efficient. This got so far that there were organized competitions to check which of the numeral systems are better. And guess what? The zero always won. Zero was just so extremely helpful for people's lives that even the harshest critics couldn't argue anything anymore. Zero became the cornerstone of mathematics and calculus. 
and it propelled human revolution in every way that you could imagine. All modern miracles like the camera I'm filming this with, the laptop you're watching this video right now or even the skyscrapers that we're living in can all be traced to the invention or discovery of a number which represents nothingness. Although zero is just a number, the concept of nothingness changed the world. If we look back at this history today, it's pretty easy to laugh about those people who didn't understand the significance of zero yet. But what if I told you that there is a new discovery which is as groundbreaking as the number zero, but still a lot of people don't even want to hear anything about it. History is repeating itself. In 1299, the church didn't like the idea of the number zero and therefore they rejected it because they wanted to hold on to their power over society. Today, the same is happening again. But this time it's not about math, but about money. Governments and central banks have always had control over the money. And similar to the church and the Greeks, a discovery of a money which they couldn't be able to control simply doesn't fit into their worldview. Cryptos are not currencies, full stop. Cryptos are highly speculative assets that claim their fame as currency, possibly, but they're not. They are not. They are not. Bitcoin is such a big deal because it's the first money which is controlled by an algorithm and not by people. And no bank or government can change that. If you want to learn more about this topic, this is the right channel to subscribe to. Because I am doing all of this full time. I'm creating Bitcoin videos to explain to you the significance of this new invention. And I am doing this on a value for value model. I don't have any other income source than this YouTube channel. So if you want me to keep doing those videos for you and to, to keep explaining the concepts behind Bitcoin, please feel free to send me some sets, some donations. You can do this via those QR codes here or also down in the description, you will find a lightning URL address. So thank you for your support, guys. This is amazing. I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye bye.